A knockdown, drag out fight is what we just witnessed. A battle royale of sorts between Jesus and this woman. And it's the sort of battle that if you and I want to progress in the spiritual life, if we want to become whole, if we want to be integrated, we must engage in routinely. So what is this battle? What are two alternatives to the battle? And then a couple tips to help us stay engaged in the battle. So first, what's this battle? We don't know much about this woman here in the gospel other than that she's a Canaanite. That is to say, she comes from a pagan, idol-worshiping land. She's seen as scum, as unclean. And the Jews call them dogs. Now, Jesus is doing something with all that in this, but that's another homily, right? Maybe that's when it comes up in three years, I'll preach on that aspect of it because Jesus is doing something with all that. But the other thing we know about this woman is that she's a mother, and she's a mother who's in pain, who is suffering, who is in a spot of utter desperation because her daughter is in really bad shape. The gospel says that she's tormented by a demon, but back then people associated anybody who had a disease or an illness was a demonic possession, they thought. So this daughter could have an illness, she could have a disease, she could have a disability, she could be struggling with addiction or depression. We don't know what it is, but we do know is that the mother is agonizing as she watches her daughter suffer. A feeling that most of us can relate to of watching a family member or someone who suffers helplessly. And this woman expresses the desires and longings to see and have her daughter be healed. And she expresses these to Jesus. In doing so, she engages in a battle with him. Because Jesus' response to her is a denial. Not just any denial, but a threefold denial. First, as she cries out, Jesus meets her, it says, with silence. The gospel says, he did not say a word in answer to her. But the woman came back again. And Jesus rejected her. The woman came back again. And then Jesus humiliated her. And at each time, the woman just dug her feet deeper into the ground, into the battle, as if to say, you can give me the silent treatment. You can reject me. You can call me a dog. I'm not going anywhere. I don't care because I believe that you can do something. I believe that you can answer and fulfill the desires of my heart. And that's the exact battle that Jesus wishes to engage with this woman. And it's the exact battle that Jesus wishes to engage with you and me here this evening. Because at each step of her groaning and her lunging out and engaging the battle with Jesus, Jesus is just drawing her into a deeper spot of intimacy and union with him. As humans, we, we're one big desire. Like, I've got wants. I've got desires and needs, longings. It's part and parcel of just being a human person. You look at, look at infants. My, my newest infant, five months old, little little. Um, Luke, I almost forgot his name, whoops. Uh, on, my, on my stomach last, last Monday, he's just constantly groaning. And he's on there, he's fussing. I'm like, is he hungry? Does he want his diaper changed? Does he want to be held? Does he want to be put down? Is he tired? Does he want to be on his back? Does he want to be on his stomach? He's constantly wanting. And as we get older, that doesn't change. It's just that the wanting and the longings is just on a deeper level of the heart. And when we deeply desire and want something and it goes unmet, there's great disappointment and pain. There's not a single person in this church this evening that does not know that. You've gone to God, you've asked him for help. You've asked him for healing for your life or somebody else and for help and that help has not yet come. That healing has not yet come. 
the thing that you've asked for over and over and over again, a couple longing to conceive and have a child, begging God, a woman who longs to be married, a daughter who, who prays and longs that her father is more of a dad to her, a wife that longs to have her husband pursue her heart more, desires to play sports this year with no school being e-learning and sports not happening. These are brutal, painful things and that when they go unmet, it's excruciating. And the battle is to stay engaged and invite Jesus into the pain and to have him heal me there and touch me. The problem is, is that battle, that process is incredibly painful. And so what we oftentimes do is we choose not to engage in it. We do that a number of different ways. Two common ways, I just want to offer two alternatives to that battle, is one is we deaden our desires. And secondly is cynicism. Deadening our desires when we long and groan for something and it continues to be unmet, it continues to bring about disappointment over and over again, year after year, the pain gets to be just too much. So I deaden it. I deaden my desire. I bury it. The girl who longs for her to have a, a relationship with her father, months after months go by, years after year, and nothing changes. He continues to be distant. He continues to not reach out. So I just, I just deaden my desire. I don't want a relationship with my dad anyways. Because it just hurts too much to keep wanting it. There was a woman, a middle-aged woman, once which told me in this situation, she said, Father Mark, I lied to myself for years telling myself that I didn't want a relationship with my dad. But it saying that to myself was a lot less painful than admitting that I did want a relationship with my dad. So I just buried the desire and said I don't want a relationship with him. And strangely enough, it's the process of continuing to remain there in the battle and crying out to him and letting my desires be known to him is the key of growing in intimacy. So discern, discerning priesthood, for example, choosing between entering or becoming a priest and getting married and having kids, two good desires. When I was discerning that, it's like, I, I want to be a priest, but I want to get married and I want to have kids and I want to have a family. It's not like after entering seminary that, okay, you entered seminary, you just the desires to get married are gone and have kids. They're just, once you enter the seminary, it just magically goes away. Doesn't work that way. The seminary could, with a young man, say, You want to be a priest, right? Okay, with well, that desire that you have to get married and have kids, just deaden that desire, bury it. That's the exact thing not to do. Because it's missed. First of all, damage happens when that happens, when, de when desires are just dead in there and, and buried but it's missed intimacy with him. And those desires still come up as a priest. They still come up. Opportunities to meet him and to bring those desires to him and have him meet me there to, to meet my desires. Now don't email Father Dindo or call the bishop and say, Father Mark's up here talking about he wants to get married, right? <laughs> I love being a priest and I'm not going anywhere. But we have desires and desires that go unmet. Bearing or deadening our desires or our wants, it may keep us from pain, but it leads to interior decay and no progress. 
and ultimately to death. And the Canaanite woman would not have any of that. She would not deaden her desires after being met with rejection from him. She would not deaden her desire, but she just kept coming back to endure the pain and to invite Jesus into it. The second alternative to to battling is cynicism. Repeated disappointment inevitably leads to cynicism. I'm not going to ask God for this anymore because he clearly doesn't care. He doesn't listen. It's pointless. I haven't been healed. He hasn't healed me. It's never going to happen. And here's the key line for a cynic. The phrase, I'm just being realistic. It's pointless for me to keep reaching out to my dad or expecting a relationship with him. He's never going to change. Young people towards marriage, I've seen, I've seen my parents' marriage being toxic, ending in divorce. I see the divorce rate being over 50% in the culture. Why would I want to get married? Marriage is stupid. I've been burned by a man. I've been burned by many men. Men are stupid. I've been rejected by, by too many women. I don't, I don't, I don't, women are stupid. I'm just going to move in with my boyfriend. Because marriage is, forget marriage. A wall of, of cynicism protects us from keep putting our heart out, to putting our heart out to our spouse as if we've been rejected countless times. So I'm just going to withdraw. I'm not going to be so quick to engage with her or with him because it's less painful. And a wall of cynicism, it ultimately allows me to protect myself from continuing to get hurt, rejected or unmet. But it's deadly for the soul, it's deadly for marriages, it's deadly for the priesthood, and it's deadly in our relationship with God. Ultimately, what cynicism is, is I end up expecting too little I expect too little from God. I expect too little from my spouse. The Canaanite woman would not have any of that. She would not allow herself to become cynical. She continued through the rejection, through the silence. She expected great things from him. And so she engaged them in the battle with him. And she continued to relate her heart to him. But that's incredibly difficult and painful. And so that's why I want to offer two tips to stay engaged in the battle. First is to create silence, to create space, to simply become aware of what my longings of my heart are, what my wants are. In an overstimulated culture that we live in, (laughs) we are becoming awful at even knowing what the desires of my heart are. So to create space and to ask yourself, what are the longings of my heart here tonight? What do I want? What do I want from my spouse? What do I want for the upcoming school year? I'm about to enter in high school or go away at the college And it's going to be nothing but e-learning. Sports aren't going to happen. And there's a longing there, a desire, a want. Some of you are saying, Father Mark, I don't want to go to school. I'm happy that it's e-learning. But what are, the, what are the longings of our heart? And maybe it's going back 10 years. It's going back 10 years and uncovering something that I deadened a while ago, that I've buried away, always back because it just got to be too painful. Resurrect those desires and it will be painful to do it because you've been experienced rejection. 
And as soon as an, just an iota of pain comes when we do that, because it's so painful, we're quick just to pull out the phone and scroll through the feed for hours to avoid the pain. Hours of Netflix, not just a day, but routinely. It's so much. I want to just be away from the desires that it's day after day, hours and hours to avoid the pain, to avoid even recognizing what my desires are. Second tip, lastly, is to hope in God. This woman in the gospel was so convinced that Jesus would fulfill her desires. She had hope in God. You may be, you may be saying, well, Father Mark, she got what she wanted. Her daughter was healed. My desires have not been met. The things that I've been asking for continue to go unmet. He hasn't answered my prayers. He answered her prayers. Her daughter was healed. It is true her daughter was healed, but to be sure, she had many unmet desires. And the reason she won the battle, and this is important, the reason why she won the battle is not because her daughter was healed. The reason she won the battle is because she had stayed engaged with Jesus and brought her pain to him and grew in intimacy and union with Christ. We know that ultimately our longings will not fully be met here on earth. Our longings will not be met until we're home fully. So even if our requests are not granted here, it's the knowledge that I have someone who knows me so well, who cares for me, who longs to be in relationship with me, who holds me in the palm of his hand. So to continue to remain in the pain, and requ it requires wrestling. Wrestling with him. And like Jesus did with this woman, he continues to invite, he invites her in this knock out, drag down, knock down, drag out fight battle. So it is that he is asking us to engage with him. The question is, will you and I engage him.